Oh, oh, hi. How are you? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Welcome to Nate's Vintage Games. Uh, how can I help you today? Just looking? Just looking. Are you looking for anything in particular? Can I help you with anything? Consoles. Oh, we have a lot of those. I mean, I'm playing on this console right now. This is the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, yeah, I got it a few years ago. I love Nintendo, so I've just been really enjoying the Switch. Play it on my break time, you know? Looking for something a little bit more vintage. Older consoles. Got it, got it, got it. Well, it came to the right place. Needs vintage games. Let me show you some of those consoles. Before I show you these consoles, I just wanted to let you know that a lot of these are secondhand. Um, so while they might look very well loved, um, I just want you to know that they are all fully functional and tested and still work flawlessly today or else I wouldn't sell them. You have my guarantee. So I wanted to show you some consoles and let you know that these were all from my childhood and these played very important parts of my childhood and they're very special to me, very near and dear. I've had many memories with friends, family, neighbors, parents. And so with that being said, let me show you the first console. So the first console that I'm going to show you is actually the most special to me. Um, it is my favorite console from my childhood and it actually has my favorite game already in it and I keep it displayed like this in the store. This is the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. And the game inside is Super Mario World. Super Mario World. Super Mario World. It's kind of amazing how old this console is, and yet it still has all of its coloring except for these little pieces right here. These are where the controllers go in, and of course you only can have two controllers. But they have the power buttons. You can have the spring-loaded reset buttons. I think that's kind of funny. And um... If you look at the back here, here's all the video components, and you can actually see, actually see that Nintendo put their phone number for customer service and a little Mario there. I actually kind of wonder if that number still works. So this is the Super Nintendo. The games that I have for the Super Nintendo are, of course, the Super Mario World, which is already in the console. And then I also have two more games. I have this one. This one is Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country. I think this would be my second favorite game. I could play this with my house closed, honestly. I could beat every level. I know every every secret. I know every secret door, every secret, you know. So like I said, this is Donkey Kong Country. I think one of my favorite things about this game style cartridge, first of all, it's comically huge. But second of all, just my childhood of like, you know, telling my dad, like, hey dad, the game doesn't work, you know? So he would take it out and he would go. We would gently, actually, he wouldn't gently blow. He would blow very hard into the game right here to see if he can kind of clear some of the dust and get it to work again. So yeah, this is Donkey Kong. This is one of the two games that I have on top of the Super Mario World, like we already spoke about. The other game that I have is this Dr. Mario and Tetris combination. Dr. Mario and Tetris. 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 Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario and Tetris. Two games in one for one or two players. Tetris was fun, um, but I was really a fan of Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario was, it was similar to Tetris, but it had little pills instead. You would stack them and match up the colors, honestly. And they had different, you know, songs, sounds, I guess, that would play over the gameplay. And when the pills were piling up in Dr. Mario, the music would kind of get a little bit scary for a kid, if I'm honest. And so I would sometimes play the game on mute, but I still love Dr. Mario. Mario was uh, a staple in my household. So these are the two games that I have. Like I said, Donkey 
Kong, Dr. Mario and Tetris, so technically three games plus Super Mario World is what I have for the Nintendo, Super Nintendo. The console that I want to show you next is a handheld and it is the original Game Boy Color. Game Boy Color, it is the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Color. It's the Game Boy Color and it's in this like teal color. And it has, look at that, it has that same Nintendo customer service questions and service. And it has this, you know, powered by batteries. So honestly, that was kind of handy back in the day. A little bit expensive because AA batteries, I don't know if they still are expensive, but they used to be pretty expensive. So it's kind of expensive to have it powered by battery, but it was really handy because I would take this to summer camp. And if it ever ran out of battery, you would just have extra batteries. You would have extra batteries to replace it right away. So, very minimal buttons on here. You know, we've got the directional buttons, A and B. And then we have select and start. And I do believe that the batteries in here will start up. So, let's try it. Perfect. So the game that I have in here is Donkey Kong Country. This is Donkey Kong Country, which, like I said, I can play with my eyes closed. Um, and this console does not have a blacklight. So you can't really see it very well unless you're in a well-lit room. I remember we used to have little um, USB, not USB, but I think it would go in here. There were little lights. And, um, of course this game is already beaten. So this is the Game Boy Color, and this is the Donkey Kong Country gameplay. Just showing you that it works and that I've tested all of these, um, consoles that I'm showing you. So this is the Game Boy Color. And aside from Donkey Kong Country, the only game that we have in stock is this Mrs. Pac-Man. Mrs. Pac-Man. This is Mrs. Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man. So sorry. This is Ms. Pac-Man. And I always thought it was kind of cool that some of the game's cartridges would be this gray color, some would be black, some would be transparent. I do believe that Donkey Kong was a transparent one. Very cool. Honestly, they should bring back this style. So this is... the Game Boy Color and the two games that I have for it. Continuing with the Game Boy handheld console line, we have the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance, and this actually is in that transparent color, but because it is well loved, um, it's a little bit yellowed and looks, you know, worn, but I can assure you that it's still works. This is the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance. And it is also similar to the Game Boy Color in which it does not have a black light. It does not have a black light, so you're gonna need to play this in daylight or in a well-lit room. And it still works, of course. <laughs> um, the game that is in here is a Mario game. Oh, listen to that. I believe that it is Super Mario 3. I actually used to play this game a lot in Summer Camp. I played on the original NES. But uh, this is Super Mario 3. This is the Game Boy Advance, like I said. It is similar to the Game Boy Color, it is just, you know, handheld the other way. So, the Game Boy Color is more vertical, this one is more horizontal. It has the same directional buttons, the same start, select, and the same A and B, with these two additional buttons on the top, the L and R buttons. And I have two games extra for this as well. 
We're seeing a pattern here, folks. I have Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country 2. I'm more of a fan of the original Donkey Kong Country, but this is Donkey Kong Country 2. And the other game that I have is Super Mario Advance. Super Mario Advance. Super Mario Advance. And honestly, I don't know if you can see the character on here. I think her name was Birdo. She was a little bit scary to me as a kid, if I'm honest. I I don't know. She like used to open her mouth real wide and she would have like an egg come out. This sounds horrifying if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But she kind of scared me as a kid. So these are the games that I have for the Game Boy Advance. And there are these kind of half cartridges. So that is the Game Boy Advance. Still continuing with the Nintendo handheld line, we have the Nintendo DS. I believe this is the original Nintendo DS. It came in this royal blue color. But I, of course, had to put this skin on it. I think this was the first and last time I ever used this skin. It was like this fuzzy pink carpet. I thought it was retro. Um, so this is the Nintendo DS. The original Nintendo DS. This was revolutionary at its time because it folded and that was just so cool because you were able to utilize both the top and the bottom screen. The top screen is just a regular screen and the bottom screen is a touch screen which was like, as a kid, whoa. And of course it had a stylus that uh, obviously is missing, but uh, those are really easy to lose, honestly. So you would buy, you know, a pack of 10 and every time you lose it, just put a new one in there. So this is the Nintendo DS original and the games that came with the original Nintendo DS, I have quite a few. I have I have four game cartridges that fit in the original Nintendo DS. The first one that I have is Super Mario Brothers, just the original Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers DS, sorry, it's not the original. It is the new Super Mario Brothers that was made specifically for the Nintendo DS. The Nintendo DS, Super New Super Mario Brothers. And no surprise, I also have Super Mario 64 DS version, DS, Super Mario 64 DS. I also used to be able to beat this with my eyes closed, honestly. I used to know where all the stars were, and I mean, it was time consuming, but it was really fun to replay this game over and over, and I used to play this with my friends in summer camp. Sometimes I would go the long way where you would get every single star in every single painting, but sometimes I just wanted to finish the game and get to the end, so I would do the bare minimum. <laughs> <laughs> this is Super Mario DS, Super Mario 64 DS, and then who is seeing a pattern here? The next game I have is Mario Kart DS, Mario Kart DS. There's some kind of study um, about what character you pick as Mario Kart, and I don't know what it says about me, maybe you guys will tell me, but I used to play Yoshi. Yoshi? I used to play Yoshi. <laughs> I don't know, that tongue action, man, you just, I love that sound. I don't even want to try and make it because I'm going to embarrass myself, but I love Yoshi. So I used to always play as Yoshi on Mario Kart DS. So those were the three games I had for the original Nintendo DS. The next console I have, surprise, surprise, Nintendo DS. This one was one of the cooler ones because of the design that it had here. They had these in a few different colors. This is the blue and black version, blue and black. I went through a lot of different phases as a kid where I liked red, my favorite color was red, and then a year later it was blue. And so GameStop used to let you, and they still do I believe, trade in an old console and put it towards a new purchase. So sometimes I would get a bunch of used games and I would get my old console and I would literally pay the extra like $50 or so with my allowance money to upgrade it to get a different color. I don't know why. It's probably a waste of money, but as a kid, colors meant everything for some reason. So I do believe the first one I got of this one was the red, red and black, but I traded it in for the blue and black. So this
this is similar to the original Nintendo DS, except it's a little bit more compact and a little less blocky and less dimensional. So it has the same two screens, top and bottom screens. This one is still touch screen, the speaker's on each side. And it took the same games, it took the same Nintendo DS games. I believe the name for this one was actually the Nintendo DS Lite. The Nintendo DS Lite. And what's interesting about the Nintendo DS Lite is that you also can use the Game Boy Advance cartridges. And you would put them here. well. That backwards compatibility saved us a lot of money as a kid. I do believe though that the touch screen is not utilized when you do that. So you just have to be aware that the quality might not be the best in the game when you're doing backwards compatibility with Nintendo DS's. So this is the DS Lite. DS Lite. The Nintendo DS Lite. If I told you that this next Nintendo DS is going to be the last DS that I'm going to show you, I would be lying to you. So this next one is the Nintendo DSi, the Nintendo DSi, Nintendo DSi. It is similar to the last one I showed you, the DS Lite in size, but it actually is a little bit slimmer. Um, the difference as well, there is no bottom cartridge area here for the older games, so there's no more backwards compatibility for the DSi. It's also not glossy like the DS Lite was. It is this nice matte finish in this blue color, very similar to my shirt. And what was revolutionary about this one at the time? It has a camera at the front, and when you open it, there was also a front-facing camera right there. And so, just like the other DS's, same screen on top, same touch screen on bottom, same stylus that of course is missing, but we will get one for you. And it was... It felt like it was ahead of its time, honestly. I do believe it still has a charge right now. Let's see. You knew you were going to have a good day when you heard that sound. So this is the DSi. And just the same, the games for the DS will work on this. The only games that will not work on this are the Nintendo the Game Boy um, Advance games because there is no cartridge slot for them. So this is the DSi. Okay. So I promise that this is the last Game Boy DS that I will be showing you today, and it is the Nintendo 3DS XL. This is the 3DS XL. The 3DS XL. 3DS XL. And it's actually the Super Mario Brothers edition. As you can see, we got Mario right here, and we got Luigi. Sorry, I got Mario over here. How dare I disrespect the Super Mario Brothers. Get it together, Nate. So this one, as it has in the name, it is the XL. If I can compare it to the previous DSi, you can kind of see that it's a little bit larger. A little bit larger. And you can see there's two cameras on the front. They were really trying to push this 3D thing. I guess there was all those 3D movies and I guess video games weren't uh, excluded from that. Now when you open it, what's interesting is these screens are massive. These screens are massive. So this top screen here is bigger than all of the previous DS screens. I honestly want to say it's comparable to the Nintendo Switch of today. It's a huge screen and this screen is a little bit smaller, but it is still the touch screen. You got this stylus that moves a little bit differently than the directional pad. Power button down here, and then these buttons down here are home button, start, select, start, select. There's also a camera on top, and this switch on the side would change it from DS, I mean from 3D, to 2D. Now, the one thing that was a little bit annoying about the 3DS is because of the 3DS component, you had to buy new games. So the backwards compatibility did work, but of course it wasn't in 3D. 
So these are the 3DS cartridges, which they made with this little extra lip right here. The lip. Lip shelf. I don't really know what to call it. So these are the three games that I have in stock for the 3DS. Um, there really is not going to be any surprises here. I am clearly a Mario fanboy. The first game is the new Super Mario Brothers 2, which I guess is the sequel to the new Super Mario Brothers 1 from the original DS. So that's this one. The other one that I have is, of course, Mario Kart. Mario Kart, Mario Kart, Mario Kart. This is Mario Kart, and it was in 3D, had some of the original courses. Maybe it had some new ones, I don't really remember. Uh, and then the last game that really surprised me was this uh, Super Mario 3D Land. Super Mario 3D Land. I was skeptical, I was hesitant, but this one was, I don't want to say it's a challenge, but it's more challenging than the original uh, Mario games. Um, because once you beat it, I think you can go back and try and get all the stars, all the secret stars that are hidden or coins in the game. So these are the three games I have for the 3DS. And that closes out the Nintendo DS line. The last Nintendo console that I have, I promise, it is not a Nintendo DS. It is actually the Nintendo Wii. So this is the Nintendo Wii. The Nintendo Wii. More accurately, it is the remote to the Nintendo Wii. We do have the consoles in stock, however, they are already sealed in boxes. So if you would like those, I definitely will be able to pull them out for you. But I can show you the remotes and tell you about the Wii's in the meantime. That is the white remote, and I also have the remote in black. I have it in black. The interesting thing about the black remote is that it already has the Wii Motion Plus inside, which the original white remotes do not you have to buy the additional add-on, which we do have in stock. And this is for games that are a little bit newer in the Nintendo Wii. Like Super... It, not Super. It was um, Wii Sports Resort. Wii Sports Resort. Wii Sports Resort. I will show you the Nintendo Wii games that I have a little bit later. But for now, these are the remotes to the Nintendo Wii. I do have one more handheld console that is a bit of a throwback. It is actually the PSP, PSP, it is the PSP, um, I do believe it stood for PlayStation Personal, this is the PSP, the Sony PSP, this one was kind of fun, I used to take this to summer camp with me, it has the the PlayStation controls right here at the top has these. I do believe it has a place for an SD card too, and I think at the time you could put like music and pictures on it and view them. and then you feel like you've seen it too many times. I don't remember how much 
much these used to go for. These are the two that I still have in stock. And that is for the PSP. The PSP. The PSP. Similar to the Nintendo Wii, I have this console in storage, and if you'd like to purchase it, we will definitely get that going for you. But this is the remote control to the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360. This is the Xbox 360 controller. So, while the Super Nintendo is my favorite childhood console, the story behind my Xbox 360 console is my favorite story. It is the story of my favorite gift that I have ever gotten from anyone on any occasion. I'm gonna tell you that story. So the story goes, when I was a teenager, my uncle came to live with us. And when he lived here, we bonded over video games. He was about 13 years older than me, so even though I was a teenager, he was still very much a big kid. And he brought all his video games, he brought his Nintendo DSs, he brought his Xbox. And he introduced me to console gaming in the form of the Xbox. And I used to play it with him. And when he was at work or when he was at home, I would play it. He would give me permission. When he moved out, he left the original Xbox console with me. And I was the happiest kid alive. I was so thankful and so grateful that he left the console with me. I played it for another five years later. Anyway, one day he comes over to my house. I was at this point a late teenager. I say 16 or 17. And he tells me, hey, I got a gift for you. And my birthday wasn't until the next month, so I was a little bit confused on what the occasion of this gift was. He called it an early birthday present, but I think he really just wanted to do something nice for me. And that was really special. He gave me a bag, and I believe this was the remote that was in there. I think there was another remote as well. And there were some Xbox 360 games. As I was opening these games, I realized that the games and this controller were for the Xbox 360. But I only had the original Xbox. I didn't know what to do because I was like, oh no, he bought me the wrong games and the wrong controller. And I felt so bad. I felt so bad. I said, I appreciate this so much and I know you were trying to do something nice, but I don't have an Xbox 360. And he knew that because he's the one who left me the regular Xbox. He said, you're right. You are so right, Nate. Um, I'll be right back. Let me go put this back in the car and I'll return it. He left and he came back and he brought in a big box. And inside this big box was the Xbox 360 console. I was shocked. I was like, wait, did you do this on purpose? Like it didn't click to me yet going on and what he was doing. He knew, obviously, he bought those games on purpose. He bought me the console. It was the first time that I was genuinely surprised by a gift. It's the best gift I've ever gotten, and still to this day, it's the best gift I've ever gotten because he just wanted to do something nice. You know, it was a month before my birthday. He called it an early birthday gift, but it really wasn't for my birthday. Now that I've shown you all the consoles, controllers, and games that I have, I am going to show you the last thing that I have, which is the games that are CDs and they're not cartridges. So this is a CD case. It has a zipper, two zippers actually, but one main zipper here. American Wings. 
Wasteland. Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. This is Tony Hawk's American Wasteland for Xbox. And actually, I have three copies of this game in stock. The next game that I have is Tony Hawk's Project 8. Tony Hawk's Project 8. And I think I do have only two of these for the Xbox and the Xbox 360. So I have this for both consoles. The next games that I have are going to be my Wii games. This is WarioWare Smooth Moves for the Nintendo Wii. This one's a fun one. And then I have, to no surprise, Super Mario Brothers, the Wii version. Super Mario Brothers Wii. Super Mario Brothers Wii. The next page of games that I have are Wii Sports. Wii Sports. Wii Sports. Wii Sports. And Wii Sports Resort. Wii Sports Resort. Wii Sports Resort. These are both such classics. My favorite Wii Sport game, I think it's bowling. I think I've gotten a perfect game one or two times. I'm not good at bowling in real life though, but Wii Sports bowling anytime. Wii Sports Resort has basketball, which has like a something called a three-point contest. Three-point contest. I also can do a perfect score on that, and that's pretty fun. The next page of games are Grand Theft Auto. So we have the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. GTA San Andreas. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And we have Grand Theft Auto 5. Grand Theft Auto 5. Grand Theft Auto 5. Which feels like it's been out for centuries now. The next page I have, I have Rock Band. Rock Band. Rock Band. And I have Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero. This Guitar Hero is called World Tour. Guitar Hero World Tour. And these are both for the PlayStation 2. The next page I have is Guitar Hero 2. Guitar Hero 2. Guitar Hero 2. And Dance Dance Revolution. Dance Dance Revolution. DDR, if you will. This is the DDR Ultra Mix. Ultra Mix. Ultra Mix. The next page, I also have more Dance Dance Revolution games in stock. This is the Ultra Mix 3, so I have the original Ultra Mix and the Ultra Mix 3. Now, growing up, I did play DDR in absolutely every arcade that I went to. I would take my shoes off and everything. I thought I was so good. Um, one year, I ended up using my birthday money to buy an actual, like, directional, like the pad, the dance pad. And it was the metal one, like, not that pad one, like, the straight up metal one that was in arcades. That was so fun. <laughs> and the next page of games that I have are Xbox, Xbox, and Xbox 360. These are the NHL games, NHL. These are the NHL games. I have NHL 12, NHL 12 for the Xbox 360, Xbox 360, NHL 12, and I have NHL 07, NHL old 07 for the regular Xbox, and it has actually Alex Ovechkin on it, who is now a veteran in the league, but at the time he was a rookie. The last page of games, I have NHL 2K10, NHL 2K10, and NHL 2K9. NHL 2K9 is for the Wii, it's for the Nintendo Wii, and NHL 2K10 is for the Xbox 360. So these are the games that I have.
I want to thank you for your patience. Um, I know that it was a lot of stock. I had a lot of things that I needed to show you. Uh, and so I was wondering, is there anything that you wanted to buy today from anything that I've shown you? No? Listen, I'm not offended. Don't even worry about it. I'm just happy that I got to show you everything. Um, if you do want to purchase anything, please feel free to come back. You can call in. Let me know. I can put things aside for you. And I definitely will keep your number. And if I get any new things in stock, I will also let you know. But I wanted to thank you in the meantime for coming to Nate's Vintage Games. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.